So last time we introduced ourselves to the idea of a continued fraction and we used this new idea with some examples to try to find continued fractions for rational numbers. So in this video I'll show you a new type, the infinite continued fraction. So uh, infinite continued fractions. So what are infinite continued fractions? Well, it's exactly what you think it might be. So let's suppose that xn, x of n, is equal to the finite continued fraction a0, a1, dot, 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 with a n as its last term. So let's suppose that that's a finite continued fraction. So is a finite uh, continued fraction. Then the infinite continued fraction, so then the infinite continued fraction is the limit of x n as n goes to infinity. So I'm going to write this infinite continued fraction as a0, a1, dot, dot, dot. And that's the limit as n goes to infinity of x n. So it's exactly the same as what we saw before, except this one doesn't actually end. And it's quite easy to prove that this limit exists, but I won't do it in this video. So let's have an example. Let's try to find the value of the continued fraction, uh, let's say 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So this is a, an endless series of recurring 1s and 2s, um, and you can write this as 1, 2 with a bar over here if you'd like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let x be this continued fraction. So let, let's let 1, 2 bar be equal to x. So if you write out this continued fraction, what you're going to get is 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus some stuff. So what you might notice is that I've got uh, 1 plus 1 over 2 plus some stuff. Well, if I put a circle around this, like so, then this is exactly the same thing as the whole of the x term. So what I can do is I can replace this by x because I've got 1 plus 1 over 2 plus stuff, and here I've got 1 plus 1 over 2 plus stuff. So what I can do is replace this with x, so that I've got x equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over x. I've just replaced this red circle with x. So let's simplify this. Well, this is the same thing as 1 plus 1 over, well, 2 plus 1 over x is 2x plus 1 over x. So if I find the reciprocal of this fraction, remember that 1 over 2x plus 1 over x is just x over 2x plus 1, because I just flipped the fraction. So this tells us that x is equal to 1 plus x over 2x plus 1. So let's subtract 1 from both sides. That tells me that x minus 1 is equal to x over 2x plus 1. And now it's basically just algebra. So if I multiply both sides by 2x plus 1, I'll get x minus 1 times 2x plus 1 equals x. And so if I collect all the terms to one side and expand the brackets, I should get 2x squared, let's see, uh, plus x, minus 2x, minus 1, and then subtracting this x from both sides, I get minus x equals 0. Let's tidy this up. That's 2x squared. Well, the x and the minus x cancel, so I'm left with minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. So now we've got a quadratic equation and we know how to solve this we can use the quadratic formula. So let's do that. So we've got x is equal to minus b and here b is minus 2 so minus minus 2 is 2 plus or minus the square root of minus 2 squared minus 4 times 2 times minus 1 all square rooted and I'm going to divide the whole thing by 2a, which is 2 times 2, which is 4. So now if I simplify this, this tells me that x is equal to 2 plus or minus, or well, minus 2 squared is 4. 
and minus four times two is minus eight times minus one is, uh, well, minus four times two is minus eight, minus eight times minus one is eight, and four plus eight is 12. So this becomes 12, all divided by four. And 12 is root four times root three, which is two root three. So that's two plus and minus two root three over four. And that has, that simplifies to one plus or minus root three over two. So this is my answer. Now there's a problem here. This is telling me that I've got two different values for x, one plus root three over two and one minus root three over two. But if we go back and look at our continued fraction, we had x equal to one plus some stuff. And this thing is always positive. So x can't be a negative number because as we've got, we've got one plus some positive stuff. So that means we can actually just reject this negative solution. So x can't be one minus root three over two. So what we get is that x is equal to one plus root three over two. And now notice that this time we've got an irrational number instead of a rational number. In fact, any time you have a periodic continued fraction like this, it's always gonna be of the form a plus b root c. So let's write that down. So it's always going to be of the form a plus b root c, where a and b are rational numbers. So a and b are rational, and c is some integer. So c is an integer. Okay, let's try a different example. Let's instead try to find the continued fraction expansion of the square root of two. So let's write that. So the square root of two. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the square root of two as the following. I'm gonna write one plus the square root of two minus one. And this is exactly the same thing as the left hand side. I've just added one and subtracted one. So nothing funny yet. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this root two minus one term and then multiply the top and the bottom of that by root two plus one. So root two plus one and then divide it by root two plus one. So I've done the same to the top and the bottom, so this whole expression is still valid. So what happens when I simplify this? Well, I've got root two is equal to one plus something. Well, this is a difference of two squares and we've got root two minus one times root two plus one. So that's root two squared minus one squared. So that's two minus one, which is one. All over root two plus one or one plus root two. So now we can do a very similar thing again. We notice that we've got root two. So when I see a root two, I can just again replace it with this whole expression. So instead of writing root two here, I can write one plus one over one plus root two. So if we do that, we've got one plus one over one plus, well now I do my replacement. So now instead of root two, I write one plus one over one plus root two. So if we tidy this up, we've got root two is equal to one plus one over two plus one over one plus root two. And now I can do the same thing again. If I replace root two with this expression, what I get is one plus one over two plus one over two plus one over uh, two. And if I, I can get the same thing if I keep doing this process over and over again. So what I'm going to end up getting is just 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. So this is an infinite continued fraction. And if I were to write this in continued fraction form, this is going to be 1, 2 with a bar overhead to indicate that I've got an infinite uh, sort of series of 2s. So that's the continued fraction of the square root of two. In the next video, we'll look at some more examples of this and work on a more general method for finding continued fractions of square roots. And it doesn't stop there. It's even possible to find continued fractions for things like the cube root of two or pi or e or the golden ratio. So see you then.